Uh, I'm Greg Tompkins, and uh, just a few things about Dural and uh, just uh, getting us all together. Um, I knew Dural a little bit before he managed the Ellicott City store, and I sometimes would call down to Laurel asking for something. And if he was having contentions with somebody at the Ellicott City store, he would tell me no. <laughs> I'm like, bro, man, come on. You've been working here 20 years. You can't say no to me. <laughs> he finally came over to the Ellicott City store. And uh, at that point, we really needed an up uplift in that store with the teachers and the sales and everything. So. Uh, you know, we started to get really tight, and uh, you know, Daryl was like, "We got this sale coming up next week. I expect for you to sell five saxophones." And I'm like, "Get back! What are you talking about?" And I'd sell them, you know. And so for the next couple of years, it was always that I expect for you to sell five, six, seven saxophones. You know, I mean, Andrew remembers it. I think there was a couple of those Black Fridays I came in. And we sold like four or five, like boom, like right then, you know. Um, on a more personal, really personal uh, edge on Dural, 2009, I came down with uh, congestive heart failure through undiagnosed high blood pressure, and I wound up in the hospital. And they they weren't sure what the deal was. They had done all the tests, but they couldn't find anything, and they just thought, well, it's high blood pressure. So I get out and. Uh, I didn't have any health insurance. This is before Obamacare, you know. Let me tell you, back then, they weren't giving fat people insurance, all right? That was the deal. So, you know, I'm thinking, like, I got this $10,000 hospital bill. I'm sick. Um, I have to keep going to the doctor, the cardiologist. Every time, it's like two, three, four, five hundred dollars $500 every week, you know? And I owned a house, and I was like, this is gonna be it, you know? I even called a friend of mine who was a lawyer, and I was like, what do we need to do about bankruptcy? And he was like, you know, I can handle it if that comes down. So uh, I go into the store, and I tell Daryl, dude, my bills are gonna go up $600 a, a month. And, you know, I wasn't expecting him to do anything about it, you know? I was just like, <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm so freaked out at the time because my heart, uh, I had two enlarged chambers of my heart, and I had a muscle on the side that was enlarged. So um, if that blood pressure didn't come down, that was going to be it. And when I laid down to go to sleep every night, the one valve that was a mess, I could hear it go, 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 go. And it was like hearing the angel of death's wings, I mean, every night, you know. And I'd wake up so thankful that I, I actually woke up, you know, so... So Durrell and I, we just go to town over the course of that year. I went and did a bunch of school clinics, got a bunch more saxophone students, and actually wound up paying those hospital bills off. You know, I mean, just we just went at it like, I mean, nobody's business, you know. And I'm not the only one Durrell's, his life impacted like that. Big Dave Chapel, the guitarist, when um, Durrell came down, with uh, the cancer, he kept urging Dave to go to the doctor. Now, Dave didn't think anything was wrong with him, but he went and they found a mass and they, they took it out, you know? So, I mean, much power and love to this guy. He helped out a lot of students, he helped out a lot of teachers, and I'm not just talking about the teachers that were in the store, I'm talking about the teachers that were in the county too, and just, you know, just all around, you know, good, good guy, you know, and, uh, you know, this is, for me, it's a great thing, but it's just, just bitter because, bittersweet, because when I finally got, uh, I got, com I got completely cured of congestive heart failure, that rarely happens, 50% of people die in the first year, the other 50% die in the first 10 years, and, uh, you know, so, you know, Durrell made me take Carmen and and uh, Nishmer out to dinner. You know, for you know, we went to uh, what was it? We went to the prime rib, right? Went to the prime rib. You know, and you know, I had to pay for all of it. And then I bought Durrell this really nice watch. You know, he wasn't expecting that. But then right after that, that's when I found out that he had cancer. And just for me to travel through that whole thing of the 
the health problem. And then here he comes down with it. And I just knew, I was like, oh, man, this is going to be a world of pain. You know, I didn't know whether he was going to make it or not. But through the whole thing, he just soldiered on. He just really, he stood up. And, and a rarity in these days. He really took it like a man. He supported other people. I mean, he was, he was the dude. And so uh, um, I'm going to do one more composition uh, with the band. I want to bring up Lafayette Gilcrest. Is Lafayette still here? Oh, <laughs> Jesus. Sorry, I'm not in my right mind. We're going to do uh, Wayne Shorter, Deluge. Durrell loved Wayne Shorter. So uh, we're going to try and do some justice to this thing. going to do this little interlude. It's going to give you a four beat count off. We're in the vamp. Four bars later, we're in the melody. <laughs>
thank you very, very, very much, very much. Um, I'd like to really give a big hand to Hannah and GT for helping put this thing together with everybody else.